Hello everybody, this is our third segment of chapter one, the dynamic earth. And we just finished the previous segment with saying, talking about the solar system. So that brings us to the, to the system. And we're going to talk about Earth and uh, its systems, of course. But before we get there, we should define what is a system. And you have to understand that system is an arrangement. It could be a pattern or design of parts which interact with each other within the system's boundaries to function as a whole. It is important that you have to realize that you're part of a big system, which probably wouldn't work without you. So you are a very, very important part of the system you're in. And you have to do it better and better. And the way you can do it better, if you realize how the system works. So you have to stop thinking of yourself as an individual. And that should be the most important thing. No, you have to think as part of this system, which couldn't work without you. So the only way you can do it better, if you see it as a whole, working just fine so it's very important that the the nature of the whole is always different and more than some of the the unassembled parts so they has to work together as a whole if you just think of yourself as just a part which is very very important it will never work you won't be able to function so it's very very important for us that you realize that everything in that system has to work together just fine so here is the system, the boundary, and the surrounding on the environment. This picture doesn't show how important the parts of the system for the system. It just shows the system as a whole. So you have to be able to see that. If we go on on this, you have to, you have to realize that life on Earth can be taught as a complex web of interconnected natural and human-made systems. Like natural system could be like a mountain, a forest. A lake human-made system could be the school system it could be the the highway system it could be the um, the government system so our own human bodies and brain are individual subsystems within networks of larger biological economic and political systems without which we could not exist so therefore we can be saying that we spend our lives in between this interdemand, interdependent living and non-living systems. So what type of systems do we have? First of all, we have the closed systems. The closed systems exchange only heat. They will not exchange anything else. Uh, and on the other hand, the open system, and the, I'm talking about systems in, in chemical and physical term right now, the open system will exchange heat and matters also, as you can see on this low figure. And that is the so-called isolated system, which doesn't exchange heat nor, nor matter at all. So just remember this. The closed system will not exchange anything but heat energy. The open system will exchange heat and matter, and the isolated system will not exchange anything. Uh, any anywhere there is a natural system there are always changes and it does have the tendency that these changes going toward an equilibrium equilibrium is nothing but the lowest possible energy level uh, in which the net result of the forces acting with each other are equal to zero so remember equilibrium is the lowest possible energy level it's a condition in which the, the forces acting against each other uh, are equal to zero. So now let's talk about the geologic system. Let's think of Earth as a planet. What do you think? Is it open or a closed system? Just even if you see this figure, you can kind of tell that uh, it cannot be an open system because we do have energy coming from the sun and we have energy going out of Earth. However, there is no matter going in and out. And some of you might say that, uh-oh, that's not true. What about meteorites? And you're right. We do have some matter coming in. However, it's so small amount that we can neglect it. So we say that Earth 
as a planet is a closed system within the solar system. However, if you look at the Earth inside, it is a very complicated dynamic network of, of uh, subsystems. And this slide shows you the principal subsystems. And you got to know this anytime. Like one is the atmosphere, two is hydrosphere, three is biosphere, and four is lithosphere. And we're gonna talk about each of them and it's extremely important that you know them all and you know something about them. You have to see that they are extremely interconnected and they are very, very dynamic with each other. So let's start with the, uh, Oh, sorry. These subsystems are continuously interacting, just as I said. This is just a slide showing all these subsystems interacting with each other. So let's start with the atmosphere. The atmosphere is all gas, so it's if you look at the mass, it's very, very small. It's 0.001% of the mass of the Earth. However, even though it's really, really small amount, it has extremely strong influence on, on evolution of life and we couldn't be without we, we couldn't be here without without the atmosphere and also the circulation of the atmosphere is powered by solar heat and gravity of course this slide just shows you the different levels of atmosphere and it's interesting because it shows where the where, where the um the airplanes are flying where is the weather uh, stations where is the the satellites and all that so it's interesting but I will not ask the the layers of the atmosphere on the test so you don't have to worry about that however it's very important that you know the the composition of the atmosphere our atmosphere is 78 percent nitrogen 21 percent oxygen and if you add those two up how much do you get 78 plus 21 is you're right, it's 99. So everything else in our atmosphere is less than 1%. And we, we hear so much about the CO2, but you have to understand, it's very, very low amount. It's 0.003. Um, so it's a very, very small amount of, uh, of chemical among nitrogen and oxygen. And also we have some water vapor and we have argon. So... You do have to know this at any time. I might ask you like at midnight or 2 a.m. You still have to know it. It's very important that you understand that that especially the carbon dioxide can be um, ruled by the formation of, of, of carbonates we're going to talk about later. If you have more CO, calcium carbonate, which is the limestone, then you have less CO2 in the atmosphere. If you have more plants on Earth, that also it's up the CO2, as we already talked about in the, in the photosynthesis. So, so the amount of CO2 is changing through time. Actually, uh, a process which adding CO2 into the atmosphere, what do you think it is? If you said volcanic eruptions, you were right, because a lot of the volcanic gases have a lot of the CO2 in it. So therefore, the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere can increase by the volcanic activity. And lately, of course, the human activity increases the CO2, as you already know about it, because when we use um, the fossil fuels and we burn it, it releases a lot of CO2. So humans can influence actually the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. And as you know, it has a very, very important in influence on the, on the climate on Earth. So it's important for us to understand the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere influences life on Earth. The next one is the hydrosphere. And the hydrosphere is the total mass of water on or near the Earth's surface. Right today, it covers 71% of the Earth's surface. And uh, the bad news is that most of it is in the ocean. And as you know, the ocean is undrinkable. We cannot really use it uh, for drinking water. Uh, the other bad news is that about 2% of the Earth's water is in the glacier still. We still have uh, Ice on Earth, a lot of it actually, we are still in an ice age. I'm going to talk more about that. I hope you knew that we are in an ice age right now. Um, you would ask, how could we be in an ice age? We have global warming. 
And of course, we have a global warming, but the you have to understand that an ice age is not always cold. It has periods of warming up and cooling down. The, the periods of warming up we call interglacial. So right now, we are in an interglacial, uh, and we're going to talk more, much more about it throughout the semester. So just be patient. We're going to talk more about it. Uh, it's very important that you understand that the, the presence of the water moderates the climate and, and shapes the Earth's surface. Just think of the rivers, the, the glaciers, um, the lakes. It really changes the surface of the Earth. The next one is the biosphere. The biosphere is the, the life on Earth. Basically, it's all life on Earth. We have animals, plants, uh, on land, in the sea, and the air. Uh, probably you didn't think about it, but the microorganisms are the most common form of life. They form a narrow zone near the Earth's surface. 1.6 million known species exist on Earth, and insects account for over one half of it. Mammals only 4,000 species. It's 0.028% of all life on Earth. Uh, of course, the local environment controls distribution of life, uh, such as temperature, pressure, chemistry. Uh, we have a very wide range of environmental conditions, as you know, like the polar region, the tropical regions. So therefore, each uh, region has a certain life, so you understand that the local environment will control the distribution of life. 